since I was not a Canadian citizen, and before shipping people overseas, they usually give them home leave right. to go and say goodbye at home. So they said, well, we see your home is in Africa, so <laughs> off you go to Africa on home leave. So they paid for my way. I, I went to a very interesting way back home. From Montreal, we got on one of these uh, uh, ships which are transatlantic. Uh -huh. We stopped in Bermuda, we stopped in Trinidad, we went down to Brazil, and uh, from Brazil we went across the Atlantic, stopping in Ascension Island, landed in, in uh, Ghana, Gold Coast it was called then. From Gold Coast I went up to Freetown, and when I arrived in Freetown, I went to say, Chesha, there was this man who went to study medicine to discover a Canadian army, army medical officer of all things. And so I had my two weeks, uh, I went to Rotifun, my mother was there, all the Coca family assembled and said goodbye to me. You were wearing a uniform? Oh, I had to wear a uniform. I was, I was in uniform. You were a major? No, 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 no. She started in the beginning as a lieutenant. Oh. You know, until you get further in the, in the, in the run. Anyway, but my free time, uh, my free time fellows who'd been Boy Scouts with me, some of them had gone to England and were also, and some of them would happen to be in free time, and we had a very good uh, reason. And, uh, the more of the story I put in my there was. Anyway, after the two weeks, I went back the same way I came because that was the only way to, to return because it was free army transportation. Yeah. And But when I got back home, they assigned me because we were not quite ready to go to the receiving station where people had been won, wounded in the European war. And we received them and went to uh, examine them and decided whether they were to go home or where to go to a hospital. It was while I was there that BJ Day came along, ah. and so I was free. So that was it. So yeah. I went to them and I said, look, I only came here to medical school. You told me I had to join the army because of the war. Now the war is over. Can I go back home? They said, yes, willingly. But as a soldier, they were also now responsible to ship me back home. This way I came this way now through England. And in England, I met all my former Sailor friends who were some of them lieutenants. Well, you, you probably have heard the name of them. Uh, uh, Hyde Foster. Oh, sure. Lat Lati Hyde, he was, he was in the Canadian Army. Johnny Smythe, mm -hmm. they were all people I know. And so we had a little time while I was waiting in London to get a uh, way to come back to Freetown. So that's, that's how I spent a few. And then I met uh, uh, the Wright family, Dr. Ernest Wright, uh, mm -hmm. and his daughters uh, Sophie and Josie. And, and he was a brother of the other famous lawyer. Uh, Jenna Wright, who oh, was yeah. the father of the first Australian woman. But, so that was all. And incidentally, their house and my grandfather's house in Freetown were next door. Uh -huh. So we were neighbors, kind of, so to speak. So that was the beginning. That's how I went back home. Now you're back and you... Uh, 40, 40, this is 40, 45. 45. And then you started working at some health clinics. Mm -hmm. You started working at some health clinics? Rotifung no, yes, I was first Rotifum from Rotifum to Tayama. From Tayama to Jayama, and from Jayama. Oh no! Wait a minute. We're, we're, we've got things backward. Uh, I have that. Uh, I, I did. No. Yes. Yes. That's right. From Tayama to Jayama. Yeah. Now it was while I was there that I then I came back to Rotifunk, where uh -huh. Dr. Silver, whose intent, what was the intention when the church helped my family to come and study medicine that I would stay and until she retired and I would take her place. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was there. But when I was there, I have to tell you this because this is also part of what happened to me. I noticed what good work she, work she was doing. People would come from all over the country, in fact from many parts of West Africa. She was such a good diagnostician. She was a graduate of the University of Maryland. And, uh, but I saw that she was wonderful, people praised her and everything. But the same people she would treat after three months, they would come back with the same disease. <laughs> so I said to her, I said, Doctor, you are glad about this, but what about when you die? Will I continue to be doing this, those treat people, and they come back? And I've, I've heard that there's a thing like public health where you can do something. He said, well, unfortunately, uh, we church people, we're not so much involved in that. We want to treat people and get them well and go back to America and tell them what good work we've done. I said, well, that may be good for you, but for me, I think I'll try a different <laughs> line. So I, I told them, I said, look, I've heard that I could get a Canadian veterans uh, scholarship to, to study, like the Americans yeah. had the uh, Western thing. And the way I heard was, first I heard about the American thing, then I wrote to Canada and said, do you have a similar thing? And they said, yes, what, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go to public health. 
and you know they got interested in the trials of military medicine, etc. They said, where do you want to go? I said, I've got it applied, but shall I apply? And they said, yes, I'll apply. If you're admitted, we'll pay your way. So I applied to McGill, I saw McGill uh, thing, you know, and I, not McGill, rather Harvard. Harvard. I applied to Harvard, and Harvard said, yes, if you have, uh, you have a degree from a school we all recognize as one of the best schools in the world, McGill, so if you want to come, you can come. And so I, I, they admitted me and I came to McGill. And again, this time, the Canadian government paid for my studies at, at Harvard. At Harvard. Mm -hmm. What was Harvard like? Mm -hmm. What was Cambridge like? You were living in Cambridge? Very in interesting, time? very interesting. Because of course, anyone from Massachusetts thinks that's the best, best state, and also they thought Harvard was the top uh, school. Which I didn't know much about Harvard, incidentally. All the time I was at uh, Ohio and even in McGill, I didn't hear about Harvard. But hearing about them, I said, oh, why not? And I spent a very interesting one year doing the Master of Public Health degree. But then comes the next branch of my story. On my way to study medicine, uh, public health at Harvard, what happened? As soon as the young people, we, we had a student Christian association in, in Sierra Leone, and I was more or less a senior member of that, and as soon as they heard that I was coming to America, they said, look, we've just received an invitation to attend a conference in Norway, and we, we, we the funds we can find I'm sure we just have enough for two or three of us. But since you're going anywhere and your, your way is being paid, why don't you join us and be our leader of our, huh. of our team to this conference in Norway, in Oslo, Norway? So I said, willingly, I mean, I'm, it doesn't cost me anything, it doesn't cost you anything. So with my ticket, I was able to book my way to, uh, first of all, to London, from London across to Newcastle, across to Bergen, to this conference in Oslo, in Norway. And who was at this conference but Rina? And the way I met Rina was when I was in the medical school in Canada, I went to a Christian conference in Ohio, at which she also was sent by a denomination. And that was the first time we saw and met each other, but we had no interest in each other whatsoever. She, she tells the story later on that she was a little envious. How oh, come this fellow comes from Canada and he comes <laughs> and everybody because he wears a Canadian uniform. <laughs> Everybody's around him asking questions, so she had nothing to do with me. But then it turned out that we met at this other conference in, in Norway. And the strange thing was that because she came from the United States and she represented a large denomination, she was chosen as the American chairperson. It was a seven-day conference, uh -huh. and seven persons from around the world were chosen to, to be chairman of the conference for each day. Uh -huh. She was the conference chairman for one day, and I, coming from Africa, I was chosen as the conference chairman for the other day. And a young man from England, a young lady from uh, India, a young man from Oslo, Norway, who later became bishop in Norway. We were chair people seven days, and so we formed a bond, seven of us. Then in our prejudices against me <laughs> dropped. And then since I was coming back to the United States after the conference, we traveled, and the only available transportation then for students was an, a, 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 an army ship. The, an, an army transport ship, and the only accommodation was in hammocks. Oh. <laughs> hammocks on the thing. But it was fun. All of us uh, students were, the large majority of passengers on this particular ship were students who had gone to this conference in Oslo. So we had, it was in those days, it was six days, a, a small ship like that on the, on the Atlantic together. And so when we got to uh, New York, Rina said, would you mind if I invited you to a conference in which I'm helping to organize? I said, well, sure, I'm, I can take time if it's not during the holidays. So at Christmas time that same year that we met in, uh, in the summer in Oslo, she invited me to a conference in Indiana, and I came and joined her there. And on the way back from the conference, on the train back to New York, <laughs> we decided to, that we were in love with each other. I'll be done. <laughs> so then when I went back to uh, Montreal, of course, I mean to McGill, uh, uh, Boston, Cambridge, Boston. She said, why don't you come and meet my parents? And I went and I met her parents and we told them that we would like to get married and I'd like her to come to Africa with me. And they said, well, that's a little difficult, but we'll see if she wants to, of course we can't stop her. So at the end of my year at McGill, as soon as I graduated, we got married. No, we, we got married before I graduated. 
and she agreed to come back to Syria with me. That was the beginning of our team, team work. Let's check this and make sure this... Okay, we have 39 minutes left here. So um, it goes very quickly. <laughs> it yeah, goes very quickly. I, so, I just want to make sure I don't... Yes, the the, when the tape so ends, I put another one yes, in. Uh, how, did you, how, would, how did your parents react to Rena when they met her? Well, again, my father had died incidentally. Oh. My father died before I... My father died when I was at Frobe College. Yeah. So my mother was alone. And we wrote and told my mother, of course, that uh, we had been engaged because we were engaged before I graduated. And uh, she, she, she had no reaction because, it, for, for one thing, in those days, the only communication you know was by, I don't know if you remember that, it was a form of air mail that was an envelope that she sealed. And, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. I forget what his name was then. But the sad thing was, on our honeymoon, which was, we got married on a, on a Saturday, which was the Saturday before Easter, on Easter Monday, we got a message that my mother had died in Freetown. Uh -huh. So when we got home, she would come already. Oh, uh -huh. sorry. During the, when did you uh, come first come in contact with Dr. Eastman, the old Dr. Eastman? Oh, it's a very strange story in a way, but it, it meant a lifelong friendship. Dr. Eastman was the doctor, government doctor in uh, Moyamba when uh, my older sister Alice was hurt. One of the male teachers got angry at her. You know, Harford School, my older sister was at Harford School, it was a girls' school. Mm -hmm. But they had teachers from different places. They didn't have many women graduates from their whole teach. There was a teacher, and I better not mention his name now, who got angry at her. She was work, working on the blackboard. This is a story we were told, working on the blackboard, and her chalk dropped. They were very chalk on blackboard. Her chalk dropped. And when she stooped down, to pick up the chalk, this teacher got angry at her and kicked her. He probably meant just to shove her away, but he kicked her and ruptured. This is what Dr. Ismond told us later, ruptured her spleen, wow. and she died of that uh, wow. rupture. So that was the beginning of the connection with Dr. Ismond, because then, of course, he knew who she was and knew about, and then since she was a government doctor, and had access to everything. He, he made friends with my with my fam, father when he came down to Freetown. And so we became friends of the Eastman family. So when I went to Albert Academy, he naturally said, here's this young man whose do, do, sister had uh, been there when she died from this injury. So he invited me to come and visit them for tea, the English tea, afternoon tea. And then I met his uh, mother, who was, uh, and also his auntie, who was Kesley Hayford. You've heard about yes. that discussion before. Well, so I got involved in that family, and Dr. Eastman became a very close friend of mine. But the other strange thing was, when I was at Albert Academy, I got infected, and Dr. Eastman said, I think you've got tuberculosis. So he, he made the test, and the positive test, and he said, you've got tuberculosis. We'll see what we can do. We'll begin to treat you, and all that sort of thing. So again, I became his patient, and he was uh -huh. a close friend. So when I came back, of course, uh, but before before coming back, since I was already his friend, when I came back, I, I, I got to know him. I mean, he was a government doctor, I was a, sure. I was a mission doctor, and when I came to Freetown, we talked, and he, he and the other doctor, right, who, who was a famous doctor, I, I got used to both of them. So when I came back now, from abroad, you know, and was, uh, was it at that time? Let me see what was the connection. What? Oh, no, I, 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 let, let, we, before we do that, you yeah. cannot do Dr. Dr. Eastman until I tell you how I came to work with him on the Monuments and Relics Commission. After two years, after my conversation with Dr. Silver, and I decided to go and do public health, when I came back, I continued to do what I said 